about three miles to go mostly downhill and it's not over yet but I'm just starting to reflect on what an epic day this has been truly amazing I actually got goosebumps driving into the Snowdonia National Park now and it all becomes very real looking up at those mountains up ahead. Have you got your ID and your email? I do. Thank you. Got my wristband. High five. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going volunteering? Fine. We're going to run tomorrow. Which... Oh are you? Oh, Fifty okay. as well. Oh Same cool. Like you. What's your name? Thomas. Thomas. Oh cool. Well hopefully see you on the start line. I learned this from someone who was doing UTMB and what they did was they put about 2,000 calories in their bladder and their back and then all day long they just had to top up water in their front pockets. So I'm going to put 10, 10 scoops, about 1,000 calories in my back bladder and it just turns into this thick gloop that you take shots of. So at least you're getting your calories and your electrolytes and then wash it down with some water and then at the aid stations you don't have to faff around with tailwind sachets so you're going to make this thick loop water in the front and then keep topping those up and that should sort me out so here's my gloop i think i put about 12 scoops in here so that's a solid amount of calories to get through in the day then keep topping up water other things i've learned that have really helped me is between aid stations i'm going to put all the food i'm going to eat into my front left pocket that i can just keep grabbing out at the aid station, get rid of rubbish, and then go into my back and take out the next round of food to put into the front left pocket. So I know that every hour I'm going to have a gel, some tailwind, and about 200 calories of actual food. So between the gels and actual food and tailwind, I'll be on about three, 350 calories every hour. And that's one of my little strategies. GoPro goes in the front for you guys, and then, my uh, waterproof goes around my back that I can access quickly and then everything else is in the back here. Poles will probably be out all day because it's very steep. They do a lot of, they often in summer carnival scenes around the area. One, off they go! Let's go Batala, let's see them off on their journey. Fifteen minutes in and just on the Lambaris path. Couldn't ask for much better. Thank you. Well done. These views are insane. Oh my god. I want to be making progress with it. It's just too beautiful. Bye, nice Thank you. <laughs> just hit our first summit, the finger point in one hour 20. And now down the pig track. Pig track. A little bit tricky, you have to keep your wits about you. But today we're blessed with amazing views. Just aiming down there for the first checkpoint. Thanks. Well done. First big climb, done. First, first big descent. The descent was evil, <laughs> I swear. The pig track. It was easier going up it last, last year. Last year, yeah. But yeah. hey, we've done it. First checkpoint, get some food. Uh, last car. Oh, thanks. Um, Which way? 
got that totally wrong. Wasn't the aid station at all. Still a bit further. <laughs> In my defence, it was an aid station last year and I had driven past it the day before when it was an aid station for the 100 milers, so that's why I got it so wrong. Hey man, how's it going? Oh, this is the actual aid station. Hey, hey Harry, Hello. how are you doing? Hey, how is the man? Hello. Where is the man? Uh, yeah, yeah. We left the first aid station about five minutes ago and we're on a much easier, nicer path for now. And then we're going to head up to the summit of Snowden. Where I think the path will become a little bit less easy. I want to go have a dip in that lake. I love this feeling when you're running along, knowing you've got Summit Snowden, and there are those massive things up in the distance. Suddenly, I feel very small and like there's a long way to go, but I'm feeling good. Coming up to final little bridge before the summit. We're at the summit. <laughs> hey, sweaty kiss. We are at the summit. Yeah. That climb. It's great fun. Brutal. Took it easy. My legs feeling pretty good. Uh, but I've run out of water, so that's actually a bit scary on days like today. It's so hot. But great to be met at the top by wifey. Yay! It's interesting this year because uh, they've reversed the course. So we've just passed the halfway distance, but it's well over halfway the effort. <laughs> Cheers. Well over half the effort because of uh, the two massive climbs. So. Um, Halfway point five hours. It's going to be interesting to see what the finish is. Could be another five hours, but I'm feeling good, so I hope it's less than a 10 hour finish. This is a long downhill from Snowden and it's very runnable, but I'm trying not to make the mistake I made last year, which was run downhill too fast. So I'm trying to take small steps and uh, take it relatively easy to save my quads for later. After two hours of up, it's nice to have a bit of down there. Such long downhills. It's great fun. Got to take it easy. Feeling in the quads a bit, but not too much. Trying to keep my heart rate in the 130s. I'm trying to be sensible. I think it's working. Biggest stretch from eight point to eight point. Hottest part of the day and the biggest climb. That was all pretty tough and I need some water. After six hours of blazing sun, this is nice. Oh, my ginger skin needed a bit of a rest. Last year the race was in July instead of May and this section was completely overgrown with ferns. They were absolute beasts up to my chest and then plus because of all the rain this was really muddy but it's quite pleasant today. I cannot tell you how steep this climb was. Even though the overall climb is not as big as Snowden, you cannot underestimate these climbs. They are all savage. Wow. We're at the third summit. <coughs> third summit. <coughs> uh, and uh, I can't remember what it's called, and even if I could, I wouldn't be able to pronounce it. But it was a climb that lulled you into a full sense of security when, actually, when it was actually really hard. But, third climb done. 
and a lot of beauty. Oh, well done, mate. Good videos. Oh, cheers, cheers, mate. <laughs> cheers, guys. Thank you. This way? Thank you. Oh, stocked up. <laughs> Final climb. We're through another forest, which is always welcome. All downhill? Mostly. 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 Cool. Two little bumps. Okay, two little bumps. Two Cheers. Little bumps. I can cope. Right. They said it was just another little bump, but they lied. About three miles to go. Mostly downhill on this nice track. And it's not over yet, but I'm just starting to reflect on what an epic day this has been. Truly amazing. I actually got goosebumps. Homeward bound. Cheers guys, give me a wave. <laughs> Power up. Hey guys. Today is Wednesday, the dust has settled, my body's actually feeling pretty good and I put that down to my strategy which I'll go through in a minute, but I've just been editing the first part of the video and oh my god it brings back so many good memories, it was such a good day. So now I'm going to break down my strategy, I'm going to break down my nutrition, my kit, I'll go through what I think about the race organisation and then I'll talk personally about how I felt it was as a challenge and where it sits in my race diary. So my strategy, if you watch my video from last year, last year I completely blew up and I got the strategy completely wrong. <laughs> this year I was really strict with myself and I basically just did two things. I wanted to not go out too fast, not go too fast down the downhills, look after my quads, so that's kind of the physical side, and then nutritionally I ate every 20 minutes. I started 15 minutes in, as we went onto the Lambrose path I had my first gel, and from that point on I was either having tail, sips of tailwind, gels from precision hydration, I also had chews from precision hydration, or I was eating my real food. And I had those Belvita soft bakes, which were actually brilliant. I've never had them before in a race, but they're small, very easy to digest, but they're 180 calories. So if I was having a gel, some tailwind, and a soft bake in an hour, that's nearly 400 calories. The other really important nutritional thing that I did that day was take these electrolyte tablets. I actually gave away more of these than I had myself because I put them all in my pack and I gave them to people who were rising on the floor in pain with cramp. They really helped me and I didn't have any muscle aches or any cramps and I put it down to that. It's again I was trying to pay attention, am I on a big hill, am I sweating a lot? when was the last time I had some so I'd try and just drip these sodium capsules in every hour or so but I'd have them on big hills when I was sweating the most and hopefully my body was able to quickly absorb it and use it. What I started to think about during the race was that big events are just a series of decisions so my brain was kind of working like am I on a hill? Use your poles, don't forget to, don't forget to drive your arms. Am I sweating? 
Do I need salt capsules? Can I see a hill in the distance? Eat food early. Don't get to the top and feel hungry. Am I going downhill? How's my quads? Don't go too fast. Take small steps. And each decision allows you to get to the next point feeling well and make the next decision. And then that decision gets you to the next point feeling well, make the next decision. So I put my overall success in the race down to these series of decisions and then also that helps break it up mentally so you're never thinking about the big overall race and worrying about how much further you've got to go you're just trying to get to the next point as for kit i'm not going to go through everything the wild ginger runner channel has a really good mandatory kit video which i'll link below the things that helped me that i want to go through are my shoes so i wore the ultra olympus 4 the exact same pair that i wore last year i've worn them in two other ultras since i've trained in them and I'm just so happy with them. Ultra have a reputation of falling apart, but that hasn't happened to me. I'm, I'm even gonna wear the same pair of shoes in my first ever 100 miler in three weeks time. So I can't knock this shoe. Obviously not everyone wants to wear a zero drop shoe, but the thing I would recommend for everybody is quite a big stack height. The, the rocks and the steep downs and the big steps just mean that you're putting quite a bit of force through your feet. I spoke in the video last year where sometimes I go training in lone peaks and which have a smaller stack height and I can end up feeling my feet. They end up really aching. So big stack height is probably the biggest thing I'd recommend in a shoe and then focusing on grip. So this shoe has the ultra max grip, whatever they call it. Obviously lots of shoes, Innovate and La Sportiva, they all focus on good grip and that will really help you on the rocks and particularly if it's raining. Last year I had a moan about my poles, I've not swapped them. If I was starting again and I had no poles I would buy the Leckies, but I use the same Salomon again which have this problem of the strap slipping out the top and becoming too long. Honestly I really didn't notice and I didn't even think about it. One thing I wish I had for this race was a Legionnaire's hat that covered my neck. I didn't even put my hat on to be honest, so, but I think a bit of extra sun covering would have been better for me. So I'm doing the 100 in June, so I'm probably gonna buy one just in case it's super hot that day. That would have been, that would have done me a favor. Okay, so now on to race organization. From the year before, they reversed the route. And if any of the race organizers are listening, I think that was a great idea. The year before, we hit this massive bottleneck and it really slowed us down in the first 20 minutes or so. This year, going up the Lamberos Pass did spread us out. Obviously it was busy and it was a time of day where lots of other walkers were out as well. But it's Snowdonia National Park, you can't get away from that and it's a big race so you can't get away from it. But it did spread us out. By the time we'd hit the top two summits, and we're coming down into the second aid station, we were much more spread out by then, but up until that point, there were no bottlenecks. I also didn't really feel the need to be zigzagging around people because you, when you're on those technical trails, there's a bit of a universal speed, unless you're an elite runner where you can run down those things where you've got quads of steel. The rest of us are just walking, we're power hiking, and there is a universal speed. So being busy, to me, didn't feel a problem. So let's talk about the aid stations. I'm going to try and remember my experience in the race. I've been reading a little bit in a Facebook group. There have been a few people complaining about certain things. What I'm going to tell you now was is my experience. You can go and find the Facebook group if you want. But my experience was, yes, I ran out of water. Particularly from aid station one to aid station two was a long way and it had the biggest climb and it was the hottest part of the day. I ran out of water, I ended up drinking all my gloop which was disgusting and I probably had about a thousand calories on the way out of Tailwind all in this thick syrup so pretty disgusting. At the time I was thinking in my head this is my fault. I should have filled up the back bladder completely with water not just a gloop. I should have known how to take water from streams and had a filter and felt confident doing that because I didn't feel confident doing that. I didn't want to get gut issues. I've never done it before. At the time in the race, I was thinking, damn it, I should have prepared better. I didn't feel like this was a race organization problem. Some people are saying they were rationed water later and only able to fill up their two front bottles, so one litre of water. Again, I didn't experience that. Maybe that's because I was slightly further in the front of the pack and they, and they hadn't started to have water issues. But I just want to talk about my experience and that was that generally the aid stations were good. The volunteers were amazing, very happy. The one criticism I would have 
compared to last year was last year they had these really great proteiny uh, energy bars in a wrap that you could stuff in your pack and eat on the way. This year they just had those energy bars cut up into open bits. So there were no bars that I could take with me and I wish they had those. I did feel like there were slightly fewer options in the aid stations this year but I did have enough food with me as well. And again, this just comes down to preparation. On that point, going back into this Facebook group, people are complaining about different things. One of, one of the complaints from a very small minority is that they weren't prepared for how hard Snowdonia was, as if that was the race organization's fault. <laughs> Go into Snowdonia expecting it to be the toughest mountain racing you've ever done. People are commenting that they've done UTMB, they've raced all over the Alps, they've raced in America, Snowdonia is harder. If you go into it expecting that and it's not the hardest race you've ever done, then good, that's a nice surprise, but go into it expecting it to be the hardest race you've ever done. You've got bogs, you've got very rugged terrain that are not groomed nicely like they are in the Alps, you've got big steps down, a bit of scrambling up, it's hard. We need to prepare for everything. I didn't quite prepare for dehydration well enough. That's my, I again feel that's my fault. So going into this race, just be prepared for the worst case scenario. I'm not trying to scare you or put you off. Last year, the 50K, that was my first ultra marathon ever. So you can do it as your first ultra marathon ever, but be prepared. If you live somewhere flat like I do, you need to do strength training. You can't just be a runner. You have to have strength in your legs and your core. If you're already an ultra runner and you've done other long distance races, expect this to be harder. Take more provisions with you. Do more training than you expect. It, it will catch you off guard. And if it doesn't catch you off guard, then that's a happy surprise. Now I said I wanted to speak about a personal challenge. This race for me was a B race. In three weeks time, I've got a 100 mile. And this was brilliant training for it. I feel good. Racing in Snowdonia makes you feel tough. Now I feel like I can do anything because nothing is gonna be as steep as what I was doing last weekend. If, however, I didn't have this race in three weeks time and this was my big race of the year, personally, I would have felt with where my fitness is at right now, I would have felt like I should have done the 100K. The, I didn't feel as nervous going into this race because I've done it the year before. My training's been good this year. I kind of knew I had it in the bag. I wanted to practice things. I wanted to practice my strategy and I implemented it well, which I'm pleased with. But if this was my big thing, personally speaking, I would have wished I'd done the 100K. So that is what I'm gonna do next year. I want to hit the eight summits. I want to run through the night. I want to test myself with another scary race that I'm not sure I can complete. So the 50K was a brilliant day out for me. I absolutely loved it. I recommend anyone who's wondering whether to do this race, you absolutely should. For me personally, next year, I'm gonna be at the 100K. On the way around, it was great to speak to so many people who have watched my last year's video and I really hope this video helps other people as well. Please comment below with any questions because it is a race where you need to get your head around kit, you need to get your head around nutrition and understand the terrain and I'd love to chat and hopefully see you on the start line next year.